Let me just get a level idea. Okay. Take this Whenever you're ready, Ryan, we're all set. All right. Low baby, oh sweet baby. Start that over. No problem. Right. Yeah, you would have missed. I'm going out of 
upon the ocean I'm going to see if I can find out why No one wants to bother with cleaning up the water but I hope to be on home for supper time and I'm going up to New York City I'm going to see if I can find out where Them boys on Wall Street stole the shoes right off of my feet Left me without food for supper time But I'm going out to join the protest I'm going to stand up and sing For it's time once again to stand up and demand That this land was made for you and me Oh, babe, oh, sweet baby, would you kiss these poor lips of mine? Please tell me that you love me, and your heart is forever mine. I got a hole deep down inside me, and I fear that it's too deep to feel. For I've drowned this poor heart in this Excellent. Good job. Awesome. All right. Whenever you guys are ready, we're all set. All right. How much is that like how you work, Ryan? You always are you always writing stuff? Can you always lay down a song at moment's notice if you're feeling it? I've always kind of got to take little breaks. You know, I get to where I just need to kind of walk away from it from a little bit and and then wait till I get the the itch and then get back to it. So. Right, right. Sorry, yeah, sorry. sometimes I gotta set it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. That again, I'm hearing them too. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Hey, they, they can hear you on the. <laughs> Quiet can... on the set. Yeah. yeah. You want to try one more time, then? Yeah, you can just walk around. It's all right. <laughs> um, no, sir, that speak to this record. Then you took a, you took a little break, and then you kind of felt the itch again. So talk about going into this record. Just how that how that worked. Uh, I took some time off, and it was really the. Um, kind of the first like real time I've taken off in the, kind of the past ten years, you know, mm -hmm. just really touring a lot and you know writing and putting records out one after the other, and um, so it's just kind of a great opportunity to walk away from it for a little bit and um, just kind of reflect on all the places that I've been and you know all the stuff that's happened over the past few years and um, kind of really kind of start fresh, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of go, you know go at it with a real open mindset and um, just explore some new ideas and try some different things out. So um, it was very much a, a, a new experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you sure that inspiration was going to come again or did, did it not matter? Were you just taking that break to just take the break? Yeah, I don't really worry about too much. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, it's this life in general is pretty inspiring with everything that's going on all the time. So, yeah. you know, I think sometimes I just, you know, kind of step back and, and yeah. look at it from the from outside of the box, you know, and kind of just look at, you know, everything that was going on, and there's there's plenty of stuff to write about. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you came back yeah. big time with a lot to write about with this with this album. Yeah, I had lots of time off and lots of time to kind of reflect on a lot of different things. So yeah, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, there was a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, and, and musically, I wouldn't say it's exactly like you know Dylan plugging in, but mm -hmm. in some ways, it's it's kind of a big blast of. Of, of surprise in a good way of just a lot of sound, a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of noise in a good way. Yeah. Did you look at this record as this album to kind of just rock it out? Yeah, I did. I mean, the last record was so, it was pretty dark and pretty, you know, pretty lonesome. And some of those songs were pretty tough playing live, you know, yeah. every night. And, um, you know, having the time off too, it was really the first opportunity that I had to sit down with uh, kind of electric guitar and a bunch of different pedals and some different amps. and. And kind of let my inner 16 year old kid come out you know just kind of playing and you know making all kinds of ignorant noises and <laughs> you know just making stuff up um but yeah i just uh, kind of the, the goal i just wanted it to be loud and be a lot a lot of fun playing live mm -hmm. you know I, I really wanted that that was kind of the main focus was just kind of making the songs a lot of fun to play live on yeah. the road you know having to play them night after night sure and was it that much fun in the, in the studio putting these things together and doing it? Because some of these songs are kind of angry, loud songs. Kind of, mm -hmm. how do you balance that kind of fun anger with just pure rock energy? 
I guess that's just the emotion that comes out, you know. Yeah. Just get, kind of letting it all, like getting it all out, you know, right. taking out the frustration with the guitar. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, I always try to remain real hopeful in, in the songs, and, and but not ignore the realities of, you know, mm -hmm. some things. So, um, yeah, it was very much, it very much felt like the songs kind of created themselves once, you know, we got going. Mm -hmm. um, we just got in a big room and, and mic'd it all up and turned everything on and, um, just kind of went for it, you know. And yeah. There wasn't really a whole lot of going back and re, re redoing things and you know changing stuff up. It was just kind of, wow, that's how it that's how it is right there. Right, and it works so well. But you could have gone to any studio, probably any producers, have anyone playing mm -hmm. with you that you wanted at this point in your career. What made you want to kind of take this route and do it yourself? It paid off. The music's mm -hmm. great, but how did you know that was gonna pay off? I didn't. Yeah. You know, it was a big kind of gamble. It was. Um, you know, I, this, I record a lot of stuff here at home and with the acoustic and with the electric as well and, and kind of had been playing around with just demos and recording stuff and, and I had a lot of ideas and a lot of um, directions that I wanted to go in with the music, you know, and uh, I was just like, man, I, I should just, you know, take a crack at it, you know, try and produce it myself mm -hmm. and, um, you know, see how, how it goes and... Um, I got to looking around just for you know a really good engineer just to come in with me and kind of help bring some of those ideas to life and uh, one of the first guys I thought of was Justin Stanley mm -hmm. and um, he's one of the first guys I met when I first came to LA and recorded some stuff with him and he's an uh, amazing engineer but as well a great producer too yeah. so um, I, after get, talking to him you know we sat down and had lunch and I just kind of told him you know some of the ideas I had and uh, we made, it, made a decision to have him co-produce it with me just to really help kind of you know turn some of the ideas into, yeah. you know, real possibilities mm -hmm. and kind of direct me and help me get to those places as well as um, just to help with other musicians, you know, bringing them into just orchestrating things. And, yeah, yeah. Um, just the, uh, having some more creative ideas as well. He's a great musician as well, so he played some bass and some drums. Sure. And, and this really brought brought a lot to the record as well. Mm -hmm. You invoke a lot. You invoke Woody Guthrie there in the song mm -hmm. you were just, just playing with, This Land Is Your Land. It's all your songs. Speak to where we are today. What was kind of your goal with this album kind of thematically or how things kind of turn out thematically for you in terms of your take on <laughs> America right now because there's some big themes and yeah. you, you tackle them in, in a great way and I think mm -hmm. people are going to respond well to that you know oh well, to me I guess it's just kind of looking around you know and with everything that's going on in the world and the way the media is and the technology these days that you know the information that is just kind of piled on you know so heavily day to day it's for me, it's just kind of hard to ignore that stuff or not write about it, you mm -hmm. know, because it's just kind of shoved down your throat every day, and um, which is great to be able to be informed on that level and know what's going on and things like that. Um, but at the same time, it can be a lot, you know, and just trying to to kind of take the time to step back and and uh, and really look at it and reflect on it and really kind of try to think about what well, you know. This is how I feel about this. Or how how do I want to say it in a song? Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, Woody was a definitely, a, or has been a big influence on me as well as Dylan and Springsteen and Bob Marley and, you know, any yeah. of those guys that kind of had something to say in their music. And um, I think for me, playing live every night, uh, it's important for me to uh, kind of just believe in the, what I'm singing about, you know, mm -hmm. night after night to get up and say, that, you know, sing the same songs over and over and over to continue to be inspired and, and feel like that I'm writing about something and not just... Um, you know, my girlfriend back in high school or, you know, <laughs> my yeah. truck or whatever it is. So, um, I don't know, that's, that's just always kind of been important to me. Yeah, and you do it well. When artists like yourself can pull that off, mm -hmm. it becomes, in, in my opinion, an album like this become like a masterpiece of a record that can mm -hmm. kind of stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. are you, how proud are you of what you've created here in terms of its place in the, in the Ryan Bingham discography? <laughs> I, I'm excited about it. You know, I, I've got a long way to go, I feel. You know, I'm still learning a lot and... You know, by no means, I'm I'm not any kind of Dylan or you know, or Woody Guthrie or anything like that. It's just, and I don't feel like I'm really saying anything that hasn't been said before. You know, it's just kind of in different ways, and you know, it's you know different generation, and you know, lots of young kids growing up that you know kind of process it in different ways, and mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the you know kind of history that repeats itself, right. you know, but still in, in different kind of ways, and you know, people dealing with it in different ways, and so it's just kind of. You know, I guess it's how the stuff makes you feel, you know, at the end of the day and, and being able to talk about that I think is important and kind of share that and 
especially on, on, a, on a whole, you know, I think when people can take songs and relate to them and kind of turn them into their own experiences and, and get something out of it, then it makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How cathartic of an experience is it for you just to blast out those songs and talk about this tour coming up that's going to be, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, going to be like you're talking about just as loud and wild as the record is at times. Is that, <laughs> is that something as an artist that, you know, we've seen a lot of you just play your guitar and you do mm -hmm. that so well, but when you're going to have, I'm assuming you have a band with you and you're going to be doing yeah. your thing, is that, what's that like night after night to be on that Well, it's definitely, I, you know, I feel like I've kind of run through the trenches the past few years and um, I've definitely kind of try to prepare more for the tours and get in shape and, and uh, getting better about just working on the songs and rehearsing stuff and learning old songs and um, and just trying to make it fun, you know. It's supposed to, music's supposed to be fun, you know. And it's, 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 you know, it's. I feel really lucky to be able to do this for a living and and for for a job, you know, mm -hmm. for work. And so I don't try not to take it for granted, and uh, you know, appreciate what I have, and excited about the band on the road, and and getting to play for people. And um, I guess it's the fact that people have come out to the shows and when they hear the songs, you know, that's yeah. gotta be the probably the best part of it, you know, because really, you know. If it weren't for the if people didn't like the songs, and I'd have to find something else to do pretty quick. So, right, right. You know, as long as people want to hear them, I'll, I'll keep writing and keep playing, and, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just trying to keep it all together. Yeah, what's it like <laughs> having your your fan base have grown so much over the last few years and playing bigger places and you know bigger audiences around mm -hmm. the world? What's that like for you as an artist to see new faces and young faces and people kind of clinging on your every word? It must be cool to see that grow gradually. Yeah, it's it's a it's a definitely an experience, you know, because when you're starting out and you, you know, or when I was starting out, you know, a lot of the bars we played, people didn't really come there to listen to music, you know, they came there to get drunk and fight, and, right. you know, <laughs> whatever else you do in some of those old road houses and honky tonks, you know, and then you missed that at all? Yeah, sometimes I do, you know. Sometimes the adventure of not knowing where you're going to be the next night and you know where you're going and all the spontaneity mm -hmm. out of it. Um, some parts I don't, you yeah. know, it was, it was great when I was, you know, in my early twenties, you know, right. um, but now, you know, kind of evolving into going and playing shows. I, I mean, I, I still remember the first shows where people came and started singing the songs, you know, and I remember just kind of being in, you know, kind of in shock, like, mm -hmm. oh man, people are actually paying attention. I better, you know, get my stuff together mm -hmm. and practice, you know, <laughs> and, and, and seeing it kind of slowly grow and build and, you know, a lot of it out of word of mouth and, you know, we've always been kind of more or less a touring band, you know, and haven't really uh, relied too much on like the radio and, you know, TV and things like that. And it's always been out grinding it on the road mm -hmm. and, and playing for people and playing shows. And, um, you know, one first time you go somewhere, there's 10 people in the crowd. And the next time you go, there's 15. And then the next is 20. And, you know, over years, you know, mm -hmm. kind of building that up. So it definitely feels good. Uh, having kind of a, a fan base that you feel like they understand you a bit, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of know who you are and kind of understand where you're coming from with some of the songs and uh, kind of makes it uh, easier to connect, I yeah. guess, in some ways. Yeah. What does, like, critical acclaim mean to you at this point in your career? Because right out of the gate, even before mm -hmm. your big whirlwind Hollywood years, you were getting great critical acclaim and people were saying wonderful things about you for a long time. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for you as an artist to kind of have those people that have kind of stuck with you since the, the beginning? It's been nice, you know, having the support, you know, I guess, I guess anything with, you know, the reason really why I started playing music was just out of kind of my friends asking me to play these songs I was, you know, writing, going down the road at these mm -hmm. rodeos, and, um, and it was really all, all just kind of started about that, you know, just hanging out at someone's house and, you know, someone saying, hey man, get your guitar, we play, play that song you wrote the other day, I want, I want them to hear it, or, um, and then you have the support, you know, from friends or peers or critics that you don't even know, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of like, well, okay, maybe I, maybe I should stick with this or, or keep writing and keep playing, you know, because there's definitely times out there when you're just like, man, why, why am I doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but even so during those important. times, yeah, yeah. during those times, you knew the gift you had as an artist mm -hmm. and the talent you have. Is that always kind of a saving kind of solace knowing that you literally have this great voice and figuratively have this voice you can share with people even during the dark times that you have this ability to make this music? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, writing songs really for me in the beginning was more just kind of um, kind of therapy for me and getting stuff off my chest. And it was a, really, you know, I, 
when I first started writing songs, it wasn't really intended for people to hear. You know, yeah. a lot of it was just kind of for my own way to kind of process. You know, the stuff that I was going through, and mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the the more you get out and play, and the more you learn. It took me a while to really, you know, I kind of learned how to write songs, learn how to play the guitar and tour and play live, all that kind of at the same time. It was just kind of just kind of jumped into it um, all at once, and. Uh, so yeah, there's, it's, it was nice to kind of have the support through all of the, the growing stages and trying to figure stuff out and, you know, people cutting you a little bit of slack here and there and, right. you know, everybody makes mistakes, you know, as you're learning, it's like, shoot, if you, you know, right. I always think if you're not breaking stuff, you're not trying hard enough. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you broke a few things along yeah. the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, a yeah. few. And getting through the, the world when you went through the last couple of years and we were around with you for some of that stuff along the way. Coming out the other side of all that and the film and all that kind of stuff, what did you learn? What did you take away from all that after, now that it's a couple of years behind you and you, you moved on in lots of ways? How do you look back at that period? Uh, I think the I think one of the biggest things I learned is just kind of you know how what what I what's kind of what's the most important you know what's important to to me. Um, it's like a, 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 I learned. Or figured out what I don't need, you know, and it's like with the music and, and writing songs and playing and um, some of the success that I had, you know, from getting to be part of that film, um, I, you know, I really realized that it's really just about the music for me and, and writing songs that it, um, I'm not really that interested in being a rock star or being famous and, you know, or any of that stuff. It's to me, it's at the end of the day, just getting a guitar and, and writing songs and, and still just kind of processing uh, life and, and how the world makes them feel and mm -hmm. connecting with people that kind of feel the same way and um, and sharing these experiences. And uh, that's kind of, I guess, the main thing I got out of it. Yeah, yeah. And you're connecting with people now in a, in a different way as well via mm -hmm. YouTube and on online. What's that like for you to kind of pop on and people might recognize the space here from... Mm -hmm. From your YouTube videos, how much fun is that? Just something a little different for you. Know? It's it's taken me it's taken some getting used to for me. You know, it's uh, I hadn't done that much of it before, and it's like kind of it's, I know it's not a new game. I'm just a little <laughs> late to the game, you know. So, um, but I ha I've been having fun with it, and the more you do it, and the more you um, kind of get involved, and it's you you know begin to understand it's such a great way to uh, to communicate, you know, with fans and the, and the people that like the songs and 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 helps them kind of get to know me better, you know, and it, and it makes it great for me getting out and playing live and, and doing these tours and um, feeling like not everybody's a stranger in the crowd, you know, and um, and that they kind of know who I am and maybe mm -hmm. understand where I'm coming from and it helps singing the songs, you know, the good, the, the tough ones and the easy ones, you know, so mm -hmm. it's definitely been, uh, it's been really cool for me. Yeah, yeah. We don't necessarily want to give away where you live, but you live a little bit out of town and mm -hmm. live, 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 away, live away in the hills. How important is it for you to kind of, kind of step away from, from the world and have your kind of sanctuary, outside of LA? It's it's real important. Um, it really just kind of seems that's where I, I kind of got to have some space and get away from everything to kind of write and and reflect on you know where you've been, where you gone. You know, it's kind of. When everything's just so fast and you're blowing and going every day, and um, you know you're just for me, I've always I guess kind of been like, just go do it and, and think about the consequences later. <laughs> you yeah. know? So it's good for me to kind of slow down and take a step back and 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 think about what I'm doing and, and think about where I'm going and and what the next step's gonna be. Mm -hmm. And I've always kind of felt like I've been a bit of a country boy anyway. So yeah. I kind of like getting out in the and out in the wide open spaces mm -hmm, where I can mm -hmm. kind of breathe and reflect. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you figured things out now because I'm talking to you. It seems like you kind of made sense of uh, your career in a lot of ways and where you are as an artist. Do you feel like that's a learning process still or do you feel real comfortable as to where you are now? And I feel pretty comfortable now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's definitely been a learning experience. And like I said, you know, I've always I've been just like go and figure it out later. So. Man, it was a real whirlwind the past few years and a lot going on and just, um, you know, at the end of the day, just kind of rolling the dice and hoping you made the, the right decision and, and trying to trust your gut and your gut feeling. And and uh, so, yeah, it's it's through the good and the bad and the ugly and all of it, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I feel pretty humbled and 
and pretty excited about what's coming up next and mm -hmm. and and just kind of I don't know I feel comfortable in my skin mm -hmm. and then the title Tomorrowland speaks to to what to where you are now and what you can look forward to what you're putting behind how do you yeah kind of all of it you know it's kind of a little bit of what's left behind and what and a little bit of what's to come you know um, that's 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 it mm-hmm mm -hmm. Not Disneyland for people that are no, not Disneyland. <laughs> well, if that's what you want it to be, it's kind of I like I like leaving things for people to be able to interpret them in their own ways. Right, you know? right. So, yeah, whatever, whatever it means to you, that, that's what it means. You know. Do you like reading the feedback from fans you see maybe online or letters you get about what your songs mean to them? Yeah, I do. You know, it, it's good to see what you know how people feel about the tunes, and and also you know it lets me know that they want to hear them. You know, if, you know. People are excited about the shows and us coming to their towns, and you know, and they let us know about it. It makes it that much better to, to get there and and to play for them. Mm -hmm. How many guitars do you take on the road? I probably take about six. Yeah, yeah, not too many. It's get too many gets too much. We don't have quite the the carnival crew, you know, to keep it all together. Right, so right. we're still very much kind of do-it-yourself kind of group. Right. Um, Try to keep it. The less stuff to break, the better. Yeah, right. <laughs> For as much stuff as I break. You know? Yeah, yeah. Is there one guitar here that means more to you? Is there an old guitar that you first learned on? You have a special guitar? I don't have the first one, mm -hmm. um, but this one's. Uh, this was a, a guitar that my wife got me. Okay. It's a, a '63 J45 Gibson, and it's um, it's been it's been one of my favorites for sure. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Speaking of your wife, how important has it been to have her? Kind of at your side during through all your oh gosh, that's she's been a big part of that. I wouldn't be here without her. That's for sure. Yeah. She's really, you know, um, it's been the best thing that ever happened to me. Getting married and um, kind of you know having a family and um, having a home and, and a place to go to at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. uh, we're very much a home team and, yeah. and do do everything together. And um, so it's been really important. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Good talking to you. You too. All right. Hi, let me just, uh, Are you too sweaty, Chris, or is it okay? Uh, actually, I... I look presentable. All right, Jim, you're all set. All right. Okay. Yeah, hey, Mario, I'm here with one of my favorites, Ryan Bingham, at home, and we're talking about his rocking new record. I could use one more. All know. right. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, hey Mario, I'm at home with one of my favorites, Ryan Bingham, and we're talking about his rockin' new record. All right, let's do one more to Renee sure. just to be safe. Sure. Yeah, that's right, Renee. I'm at home with Ryan Bingham, and we're talking about his rockin' new record. All right. Excellent. Okay. Oh. Cool. Thank you. Let's, uh, you guys mind doing it one more time for me? Thanks, guys. 